In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to set the microphone preamplifier gain for a recording of speech, or the gain control on your audio interface if you don't have a separate preamplifier. The important factors are to set the gain high enough to optimize the signal to noise ratio of your recording, but at the same time allow enough headroom to cope with any unexpected peaks. And there's another point. When you turn up the preamplifier gain, you'll hear more acoustic background noise. That's to be expected, and I'll explain in the video why turning up the gain to get a good, strong recording level doesn't make the acoustic background noise any worse. One more thing. The video includes recordings of speech made at just the right level for an original recording, at too high a level, and at too low a level. So you should expect the level to vary throughout the duration of the video. Don't forget to subscribe and click the bell to be notified every time I upload a new video. Let's dive in. I am going to demonstrate the operation of the gain control in a combined microphone preamplifier and audio interface. I will use speech as my sound source. I strongly recommend that you listen to this on studio quality loudspeakers or headphones. At Audio Masterclass, we often receive recordings from new students that are very low in level. Here's an example. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epic of belief. It was the epic of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. Normally, for any type of sound source, you should use as high a gain as you can without risking clipping. This optimizes the signal to noise ratio and is considered conventional studio practice. Recording at 24 bit resolution, however, offers a huge potential signal to noise ratio. So some of that signal to noise ratio can be sacrificed to obtain headroom above the expected peak signal level. An adequate amount of headroom can give almost complete security against clipping. When recording speech, a gain setting that achieves a peak level of around minus 10 dBFS is normally a good compromise. Bear in mind, however, that a trained and experienced actor or voiceover artist working in a studio is a lot more predictable in terms of level than a vox pop interview recorded on location. I'm going to leave the studio and move to a location where there is some background noise, a domestic living room close to a busy road outside. I'll be recording through an Avid Mbox 2 Pro combined microphone preamplifier and audio interface, which is a typical example of the equipment that Audio Masterclass students would use. The gain control is not calibrated, so I'll set it according to the levels I want to achieve on the meters in the digital audio workstation software I am using, which in this case is Pro Tools. I have set the gain quite low to achieve a peak level of around minus 20 dBFS. If you turn up your monitoring to a comfortable listening level, you should be able to hear the background noise in this location, and some electronically generated noise, which shows us that the recording level is too low. Allowing a headroom of 20 decibels is excessive, so I'll turn up the gain to achieve a peak level of around minus 10 dBFS. If you leave your monitoring level as it is, then you will hear everything get louder. At this point, many newcomers to audio will hear the increased background noise and back off the gain control, resulting in a recording that is at a very low level. But if you decrease the monitoring level to compensate for the extra gain, then both the speech and background noise return to their previous levels. The advantage is an extra 10 decibels of signal-to-noise ratio in terms of electronically generated noise. Peaking at minus 10 dBFS also allows plenty of headroom should the person speaking suddenly shout, sorry. What we have here is a perfectly acceptable original recording. The signal to noise ratio in terms of electronically generated noise is good, and the ample headroom I've allowed means that there was never any possibility of clipping. However, it is rarely acceptable for finished work to be this low in level. Most commercially released recordings peak all the way to 0 dBFS. Very few commercially released recordings peak lower than minus 2 dBFS, so that generally is the target to aim for. If a potential client is auditioning demonstration recordings, he or she expects the levels of these recordings to be in a similar range. If your recording only peaks at minus 10 dBFS, it will sound quiet in comparison to the others. In the minds of non-technical people, a recording that is louder is often perceived as being better. Being low in level is therefore a significant disadvantage. 
Suppose, therefore, that I increase the gain so that my recording peaks somewhere between minus 2 dBFS and 0 dBFS. I'm going to do this now, so you may want to lower your monitoring level. As you can see now, I'm peaking close to 0 dBFS. At the moment this is fine, but I have almost no headroom. If I raise my voice even slightly, then the result is clipping. Clipping can be used for special effects, and indeed is often used in mastering but original recordings should always be clean. Clearly this isn't a good way to achieve an adequate level for finished work. So I'll back off again to peak around minus 10 dBFS. Here's a poem. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils. There are two ways that I can raise the level so that it is suitable for finished work. I can normalize my file or I can raise the level using the channel fader. Here is the normalized version peaking at 0 dBFS, followed by a version that is increased in level to almost 0 dBFS using the channel fader. You may want to lower your monitoring level. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils. I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high o'er vales and hills, when all at once I saw a crowd, a host of golden daffodils. As you can hear, there is no practical difference in the results. In summary, there are three key points. Number one, increasing the gain does not increase the level of the acoustic background noise relative to the signal. Number two, allowing headroom on recording gives protection against clipping. Number three, unless there is a specific reason otherwise, finished work should peak above minus two dBFS Otherwise, it will sound quiet. So there we have it. How to set the microphone preamplifier gain for a recording of speech. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified every time I upload a new video. I'm David Meller, course director of Audio Masterclass. Come to audiomasterclass.com and take a look at our range of online courses on music production and sound engineering. Thank you for listening.